This is a I only touch greatness remix. Scan the code and follow. Hey guys, it's me on Lucic jumping on the I only touch greatness podcast. Okay, well, while we're on that topic, you took kind of a lot of heat from when you played on Boston from the Vancouver market. Uh, that's all changed now, probably, I would hope, now that you've left Boston. Uh, yeah. Next question. If you say next question, if you want. No, yeah. There's still some people that are like bitter about it, but yeah, I don't Can- care. Canuck Nation I, is fucked. Even I, ne- I never, I never cared. Yeah. Hey, I never cared. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if if anyone of these Vancouver people were in my shoes, they would have done like you win when you get to win. No matter who you win again, you win. So that's all I got to say about that. And we love you. We love you, Milan, and we take you any day. So don't you? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no (laughs) shit. That's why one of the reasons we wanted to make sure this was a good interview. How do you manage to juggle being a celebrity and a family man? Uh, You know what? You just, I'm so lucky. Like my kids have a good time. And before this whole COVID bullshit, I, I used to, I would bring my kids to the rink all the time, especially my oldest daughter. She loved coming to the rink. And she still asks me all the time. She's like, can I come to the rink? I'm like, I'm sorry, Valentina, you can't come. And I, I always, I always, and if you ask people that have known me over the last 14, 15, 16 years, I've always stayed true to myself and I've always treated people the same. And I've always, you know, like people for who they were other than what they are. And you know what? It's, I know you say the word celebrity that, and I, I don't like that word because we're just athletes, you know, (laughs) and we're, we're, we're good at a sport, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I just try to be the best person I can. And I just want to make a good example for, my children, how to treat people, like I said, because it's about being a good person and treating people the right way. Okay. I asked, Are you still I living asked, out here in the off scenes, Milan? Like to Austin or Kelowna? Or? I, I did last year during COVID. Uh, but before that, I spent the last three summers in uh, in LA when I, where I lived, when uh, I played there as a king. Oh, okay. The... Oh, yeah, I was going to – I asked this question to the young guys here last interview, and they didn't know what a CD was. But so what was your what, – what <laughs> Oh, your, I used what, to have the binder. Oh, yeah, what the was binder your, in what, the car. What was your first CD? Oh, what do you mean? I, like, I'm the burn CD uh, yeah. generation. We used to – what do you mean? We used to get, like, the LimeWire. Yeah. LimeWire, Nero. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we used to get that. And then, hey, actually, my older brother was a DJ, so he, he used to make his DJ Deadly CDs, so I just used to listen to his shit before, <laughs> like, all that type of stuff. And you can ask, yeah, you can ask Nick Billick. He said hey, he would make some good shit. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, Marshall Mathers, I remember yeah. having that. Yeah, uh, classic. Dr. Dre, Chronic 20, yeah. 2001. Like, best CD yeah, of all time. But the best CD I remember was Grade Eight, Get Rich or Die Trying, Fifty Cent. That's that's our shit. I think yeah. of our generation, yeah. that's our that, shit. Right that's there. our generation for sure. For oh sure. yeah, that's the best. Mike, yeah, recently got to a thousand games. Congratulations on that again. Uh, how was that? And uh, were you surprised by the ceremony? Oh, it was it was cool. You know, it's funny because guys are like. Oh, how's it like? How's it feeling? And you know what? Like when you play that many games, you don't really get anxiety or anxious or anything like that uh, much anymore. But before that game, I had like a little bit of like the jitters and butterflies. You know, like before you're running a big race, I was like, oh wow, this is kind of cool and all that type of stuff. And then, and then the ceremony happened a week later in Calgary, which was really cool that I got to uh, share that with the wife and kids. And I thought the coolest part was, and I'm going to give the flames 
all the credit in the world and it surprised me because I didn't know what was going to happen. They made them silver mini sticks. And oh, like the fact that my kids got silver mini sticks is even cooler than the silver stick that I got. Oh, that's that awesome. is pretty cool. That that's is awesome. awesome. Good and, for them. Uh, Mike, I'm going to skip a few questions down. Um, yep. the, the Giants Ring of Honor night. How was that when you finally got uh, put up in the Ring of Honor? Yeah, that was great. Um, especially because that was my first time back since we won the Mem Cup in 07. So because I made the Bruins the next year, I didn't get a chance to go back for the banner raising and all that type of stuff. And what was awesome about that whole trip was we played Calgary on a Tuesday, and I've never seen a scheduling like this. Calgary on a Tuesday, Vancouver on a Saturday. So we flew after the Tuesday game in Calgary, and we were there Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And as we the practice days, all our practice days, because they asked me, where should we practice? I said, we should practice at the Coliseum. So we practiced uh, as a team at the Coliseum all the way up until that Saturday. And then the Friday night was when the Ring of Honor night was. And there was still, uh, John Blum was the captain of the team. So there was still like a couple guys on that team that uh, I played with from that night. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. And there was, uh, I think there was like 10 plus thousand fans there that night. So it was yeah. cool that they all came out for me. Yeah. Pretty sure that was one of the games that I was at back then. That's, uh, I remember that it stands out really well. Um, you're also a strong advocate for mental health. Um, what can you say to encourage people? Uh, Just talk, you know, talk to people. Don't be afraid to reach out for resources. Um, there's a lot of people out that are willing to help. Um, I always say some people find when you're speaking out and looking for answers, it's a sign of weakness. But I always say it's a sign of strength. Uh, when you're willing to talk about your feelings and when you're going through a hard time and... Yeah, just just do what you can, and um, yeah. Okay. Did and, you ever get and it doesn't. And it doesn't have to be. You know what? Sometimes everyone feels like it has to be like your parents or your brother or your sister or your cousin. No, sometimes the best people to talk to are the people that don't know you, that have nothing to that have nothing to do with you, or um, you know, a mental health coach or a psychiatrist that. You know, just just there that just wants to listen and just talk to p these people that want to listen because it it helps you. Because when you have someone to vent out to, it makes you know. There's a lot of times that it makes you feel better about yourself and and don't be afraid to reach out when you can. You're tuning into I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Vancouver's best show with Ryan Hayes. Often imitated but never duplicated, I Only Touch Greatness podcast with Ryan Hayes. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Say Hayes sent you.